people, UGC Net December 2019 result is out and I am really, really, really happy to share the results of my students with all of you. So my students have outshined and outperformed and with the grace of God, I am really happy to see the kind of students and the kind of results we've produced this time. So they have outshined and I'm really happy uh, for all of them. So I would like to congratulate each one of you out there who have finally cleared UGC net and can now enter into an altogether new phase in life where they are going to become the professors and they're going to teach students of India. So I would like to congratulate all of you from the core of my heart and also wish you all the best for all the future endeavors. And for those who have not cleared net this time, I know that all of you must be upset. So I would just like to say a very simple thing to all of you that see it's just an exam. I shared a beautiful message on Instagram, Facebook and all the other social media platforms where I told everybody that you don't need to be upset with what has happened. We all fail, we all succeed. But what is important that every time when we fail, we look back and see what were the mistakes we made. We try to look at the loopholes in our preparation. We try to work on those loopholes and next time we succeed. And this is the beauty of life. This is how we grow as a person. So I would just like to tell all of you who did not clear it this time that don't lose hope. You just need to learn from the mistakes. And if you learn from the mistakes, then you can never say that you have failed because the failures have made you learn a life lesson and that was the only job of a failure. So make sure you stand upright, you read my message which I've posted on the social media platform very, very calmly and in a very mature manner and finally you begin your preparation for the next net exam which is going to happen somewhere in the month of June 2020. So since a lot of students who uh, are trying to buckle themselves up and start their preparation are messaging me that ma'am please can you just give us some guidance on how we can begin our preparation. I'm here with a video in which I'm going to share some strategy. I'm going to share a kind of timetable which will help you to channelize your six months and finally achieve your target. So without wasting any further time, let's jump directly and let's look at some important key points which you can add in your study routine and which is going to make a difference in your net preparation. The first important tip is note down the syllabus. Now, if you look at the UGC net website, you will find that they've given you 10 units for UGC net paper one and 10 units for UGC net paper two. But is that the real syllabus? Is that what you have to study because in just one line they have said literary criticism. Now what in literary criticism? In one line they've said cultural studies. What all topics in cultural studies? Poets, poetry, drama, just one topic, just one word can summarize uh, the entire UGC net English literature syllabus. No, a big no. So what you need to do is that you need to first make your own syllabus. We have prepared a full-fledged syllabus on our website, arpatakarva.com. You can go and check the module-wise syllabus that we have displayed for you. So that is the actual syllabus. We have started with different countries and in each country, we've begin with the chronological order. So we've begin from 500 AD and then we have moved to 21st century. And while we are covering all these ages, we've made sure that we have segregated the writers according to dramatist, poets, non-fiction, fiction writers. So that is how chronologically you understand and you complete the syllabus. Understand the fact guys that British literature even today consists of 50% of UGC net English literature syllabus and somewhere around 50 to 60 questions are asked from British literature out of 100. So it is that important. So never begin with something else unless and until you have extremely, you are extremely confident about British literature, you've covered each and everything, revised it properly. 
this time if you look at my course we are offering you 850 lectures out of which 400 lectures are specifically in module 1 that is British literature you can imagine how important it is a lot of in-depth questions are asked so first of all make sure you download the syllabus from my website you can get the printout once you get the printout you begin your preparation by marking each and every writer you are completing don't move to the next writer unless and until you have completed one writer perfectly if you are uh, looking at the modern writers and you're working with T.S. Eliot, you've done two works, you're now bored with T.S. Eliot, you move to Virginia Woolf, then you move to James Joyce, no, you will never going to be confident on the day of the exam because you've not completed it thoroughly. You have to continue with T.S. Eliot unless and until you have completed that writer completely. Drama, all the text, all the poems if you've not completed it for net pro from net point of view you're not going to move to the next writer make sure you give this commitment to yourself so it is very important to know the syllabus to check mark all the writers you've done and not to move to the next writer unless and until you've completed the first one also my suggestion would be to start chronologically because that is how it is going to be there in your mind i have already told you in one of my videos that this time a lot of chronological uh, questions were asked for example arrange the order of works okay according to the chronology so if you are looking at a writer like dh lawrence start with the first work and gradually move to the last work so that when you are learning you are learning in that order you exactly know kiske baad kya aega. that is important so the first thing note down the syllabus know the real syllabus Okay, for that you can refer to my website. We have a huge list of each and every writer. No writer which is important from net point of view is not there in our list. Every writer we have covered and we keep on updating it whenever a new paper is released by NTA so that we know what all writers to add, what all writers to remove. Refer authentic material. The next important point. Now, guys, I know that a lot of you who call me on a daily basis uh, would ask me the same question that, ma'am, we are reading from Arihant guidebook or we are reading from a true man's guidebook. Is it enough? I would not like to tell you whether it's enough or not. You have to decide it with yourself. When you read a complete guidebook, you need to see if you're able to answer the previous year papers correctly. If not, that means there are loopholes in your preparation. You have not yet uh, covered word everything in detail in these guidebooks or in other books also you might find that they're giving you the place where the writer was born name of uh, his parents maybe also the name of his primary and senior secondary school now you might mug up all these details but they're never going to be asked in exam so you are working hard but you're working in the wrong direction and that is never going to give you results what is important for you to know exactly what kind of questions can be asked they're going to ask you the first work they might ask you some important magazine which writer was associated to all these things you have to put in your notes so that is the reason why I keep on telling that please don't refer to any one book when we make our course we refer to five six books we refer to five seven websites and then we club the information and finally give you the audio lectures which are full-fledged covering each and every point so make sure that even if you're not subscribing to our course you refer to my YouTube videos you refer to other uh, internet sources like cliff notes spark notes grade saver and you club the material and finally make your notes that is how you need to do your hard work prepare notes thoroughly you can whatsapp us on the number displayed above we are going to give you a book list which might help you in your net preparation we have listed some important books which you must study but that is not enough there is more to it i've already made a very important video on important websites for the point of view of ugc net english literature please refer to that video after you watch this video so that you know how to make notes from those websites. I have talked about that whenever you are making notes, all those points you have to take from these websites and then club them. First and last lines, first and last book of that writer, also important references if they have included any, when was it first staged and in front of whom it was staged. If it was staged in front of Queen Elizabeth, that becomes important. So all these things you have to keep in mind. 
So make sure you refer to authentic material, you refer to correct material, correct material in the sense that you're not going to remember the grandparents name of any important writer, but you have to remember the name of his first book, maybe the name of the magazines he was associated to, also the name of the important writers which he was associated to. If he belonged to a particular literary movement, you must know who are the other members of that literary movement. That is how you make your proper notes for the point of view of UGC net exam. The next important thing you must keep in mind is to prepare notes. I've seen a lot of students who enroll in my audio course who just listen to the audio lectures or the people who are reading books, they might just read the book. They're not going to keep a pen handy or a highlighter handy. They're just going to read the book. I would like to ask them, are you doing a pleasure reading? Okay, are you just reading for fun? No, you're reading to pass a test. You're reading to pass a competitive exam. Guys, take it seriously. If you're listening to my lectures, you have to jot the important points down. Your memory is not super sharp to absorb all the information and remember it till the day of the exam. Nobody can remember anything like that. Even if you go to a classroom lecture, you jot down the important points. Similarly, if you're reading a book, don't just flip the pages and keep on reading. Stop after after a paragraph, write down the important points and then move forward. So make sure you refer to the three R's. Read, review, recite. Read. Whenever you are preparing, read. Okay, or you are listening to audio lectures, listen properly. Then prepare your own notes while you are reading. Okay, jot down the pointer, then recite. You have to recite. You have to close the copy, your revision copy, your notes copy and then tell yourself, ask yourself to uh, reproduce whatever you have written okay if you're forgetting a point open the copy again read it and then close the copy you have to recite you have to learn it's not just merely absorbing information you have to learn and finally is review after every four or five days you have to go back to whatever you've learned and see whether you are able to recall it or not revision is the key if you keep on reading information putting it in your memory it is going to go somewhere else in the bermuda triangle from where you will never be able to get the information out and on the day of the exam you'll be surprised to see that you remember nothing even after putting in so much effort so make sure after every milestone you stop you review you revise and then you move forward. The fourth important point, of course, is a very different one from what you must have been expecting and that is to get a life. There's a very beautiful quote by Sadhguru who says that don't take life so seriously. You are never going to get out of it alive. So why are you taking exams so damn seriously? It's important to be sincere, but it's not important to be serious. You need to be sincere, you need to be disciplined, but you don't need to be serious. If you are studying for exam, there are six months which, uh, in which you are going to do your preparation. And in order to continue your preparation for six months, you need to take study breaks. You need to, you need not isolate yourself from your family and friends so much that after 15, 20 days, you'll be so exhausted with your study routine that you don't feel like picking up your book. No, never do that. Every day, make sure you're studying for six hours, seven hours. That's more than enough. Five hours is enough. But if you're studying for five hours, you are dedicated, you're concentrated. Now, after you've done your studies, take out time for your family, friends, go for a walk, Go on, go for a shopping, go to watch movies, read some books for pleasure, watch a series on Netflix, do anything, but add a little excitement, a little fun in your life as well, because you'll be exhausted with your studies if you don't add fun into your life. If you study for five hours seriously and you continue this for the next six months, I'm guaranteeing you, you'll clear net. But if you exhaust yourself by studying 15 hours for 15 days and then not studying at all for the next two, three months, that is never going to produce any results. So make sure you take a break before your mind breaks down. 
last but not the least is the need for a study timetable now in order to make a study timetable i am just going to give you some tips so you know how your day is planned if you have college if you have some job in your hand and if you are preparing simultaneously for this exam then obviously you have to make a timetable differently you might study late nights or early mornings or if you are free and you're just preparing for this exam you can utilize maximum part of your day whatever it be make sure you give 4 to 5 hours regularly if you want to clear it in one attempt even if you subscribing to my course i would suggest you that give 3 to 4 hours at least okay if you are making your own notes then it would be a tiresome process it might involve 8 to 9 hours since we give you everything you have to only learn and absorb the information it is going to take 3 to 4 hours now if you are giving 3 to 4 hours make sure you don't study in one stretch because your brain is going to get drained out after after 45 minutes nothing is going to get inside so make sure after every 45 50 minutes you take a 10 minutes break you study for 50 minutes you take a 10 minutes break do whatever you want to do listen to some songs maybe take a power nap go on a walk talk to a friend do whatever in that 10 minutes and then again get back to study now when you get back to study make sure that whatever you've studied in the last 50 minutes you just revise it once before you begin the next chunk so 50 minutes aapne padhai kari 10 minutes you took a break then you came back from the break 10 minutes you utilized in revising whatever happened in 50 minutes and then you begin the next chunk this is called as pomodoro technique i have already mentioned it in one of my videos where i have discussed the importance of it also make sure every sunday you not you do not study anything new you just refer and revise whatever you've studied in the entire week so that your brain doesn't forget it at the same time three things very important uh, which you need to put in your day sleep proper sleep 6 hours to 8 hours sleep is very important proper exercise at least 1 hour of exercise or not even 1 hour 30 minutes of exercise is important because you never know this fact that when you exercise your brain is more powerful to absorb information if a person exercises and then studies he is able to retain very quickly and retain for a longer period of time so that is why exercise is going to help you and meditation i've given a meditation video for uh, on my youtube channel for all of you it's a 10 minute meditation video in which i have tried to give you visualization technique where you imagine that you're giving the exam and you're getting all the questions right make sure you practice it every day it is going to add to the law of attraction uh, theory that means that whatever you are thinking that is going to happen also subconsciously it is going to make you confident day by day so make sure these three things are added in your timetable along with 3 to 4 hours of study routine so that is how you have to plan your day for the next 6 months so with that note i would like to take your leave before that i would like to tell you that registrations for the next online batch june 2020 is open we've got limited seats please visit our website to see the course we are offering we are giving you 850 audio lectures uh, 250 pdfs and 3000 mock test questions so make sure you go through what we are offering you listen to the demo audios refer to the demo pdfs and if you feel satisfied you join the course at the earliest there's no point joining it in may or june because then you'll never be able to complete it on time so join before it gets too late also follow me on all the social media platforms so that you get notified about the latest updates and any discounts if we have to offer subscribe to the channel okay because i know that you guys are liking the videos so make sure you hit the subscribe button so that next time i post a video you get a ding dong on your phone so that's it for this video lecture we'll meet very soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarwa.com